So the Twitter ID is East, Underbar West, Underbar Herbs, and the hashtag is pound sign E-W-F-L-U. Okay then. So our speaker today has over 30 years of experience treating thousands of patients in his clinic. He's a licensed acupuncturist. He's the founder of the American Herbalist Guild, and he's written more than nine books on herbalism, including the internationally best-selling herb book, The Way of Herbs, which has sold over half a million copies worldwide. And he's educated some of the most prominent herbalists of our day. He continues to teach in our school, the East-West School, which he founded, as well as practice herbalism in his clinic. We're pleased to have America's herbalist, Michael Tierra. So Michael, what are you going to be covering today? Hi everyone. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, fl the flu generally. What, what is it? Uh, in, speaking in terms that everybody hopefully will be able to understand. The past history of flus and pandemics in the 20th century leading up to this, this particular time. The, uh, what's so special and what's so important about the H1N1 so-called swine flu that uh, everyone's talking about today. And uh, what's recommended uh, by the government and medical agencies in terms of treatment, including the issues and controversies, of which there's many, relating to vaccinations and the anti-flu vaccine. And then the common recommendations, uh, the, the common sense recommendations like hygiene and things like that, which have proven themselves to be effective in helping to control flus in the past. Uh, adding some of the traditional ideas about diet and nutrition. Uh, and finally, the role of herbs in the uh, maintenance and treatment of, uh, of the flu generally and uh, hopefully in relationship to the specific flu. So the first uh, thing I think that many people get confused about is uh, just because somebody is talking about the flu and they're supposed to be a health expert, uh, does that mean they've never had the flu? And I can tell you uh, that I had the flu actually today, this, <laughs> not today, this year, earlier in the spring. And, uh, and I, and I uh, went through the uh, requisite, uh, usually uh, three weeks of complete recovery. Uh, usually it's a week of the most intense part of it, and then two weeks recovering from what I often think is the nastiest part of the flu, which is the uh, bronchitis that, that affects uh, so many of us afterwards. But many people have questions about uh, how, to, how, to, how to tell the difference between whether they have a cold or a flu. This isn't always so easy, but here are some guidelines of determining when it's a flu. Uh, fever is one of the indications. Uh, this particular flu doesn't necessarily always show up with fever, however, as I'm told, although everyone I've ever seen with it, ha uh, with the flu does have a fever. Um, then there's uh, uh, headaches and extreme exhaustion, body aches. This is a very characteristic issue uh, associated with the flu. Uh, sore throat. Uh, from a uh, traditional Chinese medical perspective, a uh, sore throat is one of the indicators for using antiviral herbs. And sometimes there's stomach discomfort, which gives rise to the notion that uh, some people think that they've had the stomach flu. And uh, as I've understood it, uh, there is no such thing as a stomach flu. Uh, the f influenza is specifically an upper respiratory or a respiratory disease. Uh, and uh, along with colds, one of its characteristics is that it's self-limiting. This means that it basically is something that, uh, that, that if, if we can ma maintain it and manage, manage it properly, uh, it does naturally come to a, an end. Uh, and one of the issues that happens that causes uh, people to, to suffer complications from the flu is uh, the addition of bacterial complications that may accompany at certain stages of the, of the flu, and 
Uh, the other thing is that uh, sometimes people are just uh, very weak and can't uh, weather the flu properly. And uh, quite frankly, I think that um, most of our culture has forgotten how to how to treat themselves. Uh, and uh, I think I think in that way, many traditional people in the world know common sense things like when you're sick, go to bed. Uh, today, when you're sick, go to the drugstore and get some over-the-counter medication so you can continue to go to work. That doesn't work in terms of treating the flu, and uh, as we'll see. Uh, one of the old naturopathic concepts of flus and colds is that it's a, the body's natural seasonal house cleaning. Uh, this is something that I think is forgotten, and uh, think of it a little bit this way, that each season of, of life brings with it uh, changes that help us to adapt to that season and to let go of what has happened previously. The, uh, uh, these self-limiting viruses, if they are managed properly, oftentimes le leave us feeling better and stronger than we did before we went into it. Uh, sometimes the severity of the flu has to do with uh, how much uh, toxins and how much we have to overcome from the kind of lifestyle that led us dietarily and, uh, and in terms of emotionally to the place where when we finally get the flu, uh, there's a great deal to overcome. 